On today's show, we're making a delicious hazelnut cookie. I got this recipe from the Bloodroot restaurant in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and we recently went up there to film a segment. So we were talking about baking, and, and I told her, as I tell everyone, that baking really isn't my thing. You know, it's just, I just don't bake a lot. I don't know, it just doesn't work out for me. So she assured me that this particular cookie recipe was very easy and very delicious, and even I could do it. So I'm going to use one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and then a third of a cup of unsweetened cocoa. Now you have to use unsweetened cocoa, and, and um, Selma stressed to me that it has to be very good quality cocoa. So I'm gonna just add that to the flour. And then half a teaspoon of baking soda. And a half a cup of chopped nuts. And I'm using uh, chopped hazelnuts. I don't take the skins off, they, they don't bother me. So just half a cup of nuts. All right, so now we'll get this combined. All right, this is coconut oil. Now sometimes when you get it at the store, it actually comes out almost like shortening. It'll be really set up. It'll be really short and it'll be in a container and it'll be like, it'll almost be like Crisco. Sometimes it's like this, kind of half and half, like a little solid, a little bit liquid, and sometimes it's all liquid. But either way, the measure is three quarters of a cup. So if it's solid, don't overcompensate, or if it's liquid, don't hold back. It's the same measure. So three quarters of a cup of coconut oil. And the thing about coconut oil is that it's a real good antioxidant uh, immune system booster. It's a great, great oil. It's gotten a bad rap over the years. I encourage you to try this recipe and I encourage you to try coconut oil more frequently. Now I'm going to put in two-thirds of a cup of organic dark brown sugar and a quarter of a cup of organic cane sugar. Half a teaspoon of fine kosher salt. We want to use the fine salt when you're baking. All right, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now with your mixer on, on, on low, what you want to do with this is just get it combined. So you don't need to beat the heck out of this and try to get it all fluffy like you're using eggs and butter. You just want to get this just simply combined. Okay. Now, we're going to add in the dry ingredients. And just, she said just dump them in, so that's what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to just, on very low, just get this combined. Okay, now just scrape the sides down toward the center. Okay, so what we have, you can see if you apply a little bit of pressure, this pulls together. Now what you don't want to do is overmix it. First of all, it makes the cookie tough because you're overmixing the flour. And uh, secondly, it'll just soften up that coconut oil even more. So this is good. Now what I need to do with this is separate the dough into two portions and then roll it into, a lo into two logs about two inches in diameter. So I'm going to get this rolled up into my two portions because I'm going to need to refrigerate it for about 20 minutes because it just needs to firm up because if you slice it now, this is so crumbly, but they're so good. But anyway, it's so crumbly that if you try to slice it now, it'll just fall apart. So I'm going to refrigerate it for about 15 to 20 minutes, you know, until it's solid enough and easy to slice. And, um, and then we'll get ready to bake them. So while I have them in the refrigerator, I'll preheat my oven to 350 degrees. I've divided the dough in half. So this recipe should make about two dozen cookies. And they're very rich tasting, but they're not really rich. That's what's nice about them. Okay, we have to just roll it up tightly in foil and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, I've had my dough refrigerated for about uh, 15 minutes. If you let it get too hard, then you have to let it come a little bit more to room temperature. And I'm gonna unroll it and slice it. Now, Selma told me that there's a good chance that, that this will crumble, it'll come apart. What you do is just, when you get it over to your baking sheet, just squeeze it back together and it's gonna bake up perfectly fine. So just with a sharp knife, see this is what it, this is what it will do, it will just simply separate a little bit on the top. Then when you get it on your sheet, just squeeze it back together. 
And as I said, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm going to bake these for between 12 to 14 minutes. Set a timer. Take my advice. Set a timer because you won't really see if these are getting dark because they're so chocolatey. So 12 to 14 minutes. They're going to be really soft when they come out. So you take out the sheet, put it on a rack, and put it aside, and you wait until the cookies firm up before you remove them. That usually takes about 8 to 10 minutes. And then you're ready to eat. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and you can see how easy it is to convert some of your favorite foods into healthier versions, especially Italian dishes, and those are some of my favorites. And these are absolutely wonderful. This recipe is in Selma and Noel's cookbook called Bloodroot Volume 2. They're absolutely delicious. Definitely try these. I'm all out of time for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time on Delicious TV's Totally Vegetarian.